Uh, now we'll have Pavitra S, uh, also from IMSC. She'll be talking about the uh, evolutionary trajectories of Candida auris through genome rearrangements. Good evening, everyone. I am S. Pavitra. Um, I work with Rahul Siddharthan from the Computational Biology Group of Math Science. And uh, the work that I'm going to present today was done in collaboration with Professor Kostav Sanyal. Um, he has a nice mycology lab in GNCSR. So I have picked up one organism that, uh, from the plethora of the ones that he, he works on. So, um, so Candidaurus. This is the organism that I'll be talking about today. Uh, what is special about Candidaurus? It's a fungus. And um, not just a fungus, it's a human pathogen fungus. So um, why should we be interested in this? Because, um, OK, so uh, uh, the, the plate picture that you see there is, uh, is, uh, is a coronary formation of Candidaurus. And uh, here you see the classification of Candidaurus. But rest apart, uh, Candidaurus is uh, interesting because uh, among all the species of Candida, this guy has been discovered fairly recently. Recently means a decade back in 2009 from the ear canal of a patient, a Japanese patient. And uh, uh, surprisingly, these, this particular Candidaurus is seen to infect people who are immunocompromised. So it causes something called nosocomial outbreaks. That means hospital related. I mean, people who are who have a compromised uh, immune system, they are susceptible to Candida auris. And apart from these, these uh, the infections that Candida auris cause are really difficult to treat. Why? Because uh, broadly, there are three classes of antifungal drugs. And uh, this Candida auris can have a nice resistance to all the three major classes of antifungal drug. Um, so that's why it's multi-drug resistant human fungal pathogen. It is tolerant to steril uh, sterilization agents and it can also survive elevated temperatures. Okay, so um, as I said, it was first discovered in 2009. Well, uh, uh, since then, uh, there have been um, uh, uh, simultaneous outbreaks at isolated ge geographical uh, locations across the world. So, um, what? So, the question that we uh, try to address was: What could drive this rapid emergence? So, um, generally, uh, when uh, these microorganisms they develop some sort of resistance. So uh, resistance, uh, there is a lot of uh, changes that happen at the level of chromosomes. That is karyotypic alterations that goes around. So uh, we probably thought that, OK, uh, so this was the approach for this study. And uh, we looked at, uh, so centromere is uh, something that I'd like to give an introduction to. So centromeres are um, a functional part of uh, chromosomes. Uh, uh, so, in this picture, you see a chromosome. So, uh, the general picture that comes to our mind uh, for a chromosome is that X shaped, and the constriction that you see that's where they, that's what is called as a centromere. centromere. So, during cell division and all, um, it is the last point of contact between uh, two sister chromatids. So, why centromere I'm talking about here is because the previous studies in the related uh, um, fungal studies has revealed that uh, regions in and around the centromeres happen to be the hotspots for karyotypic alterations. So, um, yes, so we focused on centromeres. Now, within um, yeast, um, uh, uh, within yeast species, um, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae is the most popular one, and we all know about it. So there, there, there is a range uh, of the structure uh, range. So centromere doesn't come in one shape; uh, it is uh, sort of um, uh, comes in different uh, forms. So in uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae or the Baker's yeast, it is a very small, uh, 125 base pairs long uh, centromere, and hence called a point centromere. Uh, in other, uh, so here C means candida. So in other candida species, uh, they have uh, non-point centromeres or an extended centromeres and hence called regional centromeres. But they have other uh, distinct features that um, set them apart. Yeah. So the ones that 
we are interested is the last one. So here PHD means uh, pericentromeric heterochromatin deficiency, uh, deficient uh, centromere, sorry for the big word, but it means that a non-active region which, um, which uh, kind of surrounds the centromere, that is deficient in candida auris, which is not seen in otherwise the related species. So just wanted to point out this. So um, the first step towards this was uh, identification of centromeres in the candida auris. Uh, this is an experimental work and this was done in Cossessor's lab. Um, uh, so uh, the uh, centromeres were identified through uh, various experimental methods, not getting into the details, but uh, they conform to the usual picture of uh, nuclear um, um, localization of the centromeres, uh, punctate formation uh, in the gel, uh, in the in the picture, immunofluorescence picture that is shown there, and uh, uh, the other features. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. This one. Yeah. Right. So uh, this is. Uh, um, uh, so we have uh, nuclear. Uh, uh, nuclear periphery localization of uh, uh, centromere. Uh, so, uh, so in centromeres, uh, uh, in centromeres, there is this uh, uh, different protein uh, or uh, 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 variant protein of histone, which is uh, H3 variant. Um, this again uh, is, is it's called CENPA. Uh, so, so using this protein, basically, uh, we go after this protein to track where the uh, centromeres are. So, uh, basically, we we uh, we get the identification of centromeres, and we were able to tell that they were small, regional. Uh, they were rich in CN CENP as what is expected it to be, and uh, they have a GC poor rich region. Sorry, GC poor region, and uh, as is uh, earlier told, it lacks in. Uh, uh, in that inactive zone, uh, peripheral zone of that centromere, and it doesn't have uh, any repeats uh, uh, in, in that particular stretch of centromere. So uh, uh, centromeres come out as a very uh, unique sequences, um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. So, okay, so as I told that there were uh, four, um, uh, uh, four uh, different clades that, that is basically uh, the simultaneous emergence across the different across different geographical locations in the world. So uh, there are four major uh, clades or groups of this Candida auris species, and uh, so the approach was to look at uh, how these uh, chromosomal rearrangements or the karyotypic alterations happen across the clades, and then we try to look at. Uh, Candida auris nearby species and Candida auris and a little bit far apart species. So this, uh, so th these are the levels at which we try to look at how the alterations have happened. So this is across the clays and uh, these are the regions which are just um, nearby to the centromeres and all of them are consistently aligned. Um, uh, there are no arrangements within the centromeric regions as such. Um, and uh, when we look uh, uh, chromosome versus chromosome with uh, across the clades. Uh, clade 1, clade 2, clade 3, they did not show much chromosomal rearrangements. Yes, clade 3 and clade 1 had some translocations, but the most uh, striking or interesting thing that was that from clade 2. Clade 2 is the, um, so in clade 2, we had seven uh, chromosomal rearrangements as compared to clade 4. Uh, and out of these, uh, um, uh, sorry, five chromosomal rearrangements, and out of these uh, three, uh, 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 out of th three of five were uh, in and around the region of uh, centromeres. So, uh, yeah. So, clade two uh, kind of uh, uh, is, is different when com compared to the rest of the clades. Right. And then, um, so that was across the clades. Now, uh, uh, there is a complex called hem hemulonic complex. Uh, basically, it's a set of three speech, uh, candida species. Uh, candida dubus, hemulonite, pseudo hemulonite, and hemulonite. These were the three that we uh, compared our uh, alterations with. And uh, I'd like for you to take a note on candida lucitania, which we will come across in the later part of this. 
um, yeah, so these are called, uh, so, so this is a sentinel analysis. Uh, what I mean by sentinel, what I mean by sentinel analysis is uh, basically mapping the uh, regions of chromosomes of one one species with the other. So here it's uh, clade one, uh, clade one, clade two, clade three with uh, with uh, the hemilioni complex. So here we see that uh, there are not much uh, chromosomal rearrangements when you uh, have clade one, clade three, clade four uh, against uh, one of these uh, uh, hemilionic complex. Uh, but clade two, uh, it has several uh, uh, breakpoints happening and a uh, lot of rearrangements happening even when it's across the, uh, I mean, uh, in this dubus hemilionic uh, species. Yes. Uh, so Candida lusitania, it it is uh, it doesn't. Uh, uh, so Candida lusitania is again. Uh, 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 I mean, it's uh, it's 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 yet far apart from um, Candida auris as compared to the Hemilionic complex. So here we again did the uh, same Sentinel analysis for this organism. Um, and this one was completely uh, uh, um, disarranged. Uh, uh, so, but what we could uh, get out of it was uh, focusing on again the centromeric regions was. Um, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention, but this uh, Lusitania has um, eight chromosomes. Uh, our Oris has seven chromosomes. Now, the, uh, uh, during the evolutionary timeline, there has been some sort of inactivation or or some. Uh, something that has happened which has led to the reduction of one chromosome. So um, keeping that in uh, note, uh, it was found that uh, two chromosomes from Lusitania, that is the one which has eight, uh, um, eight chromosomes, uh, they, they were mapping, uh, the centromeres centromere from those two chromosomes were mapping to one chromosome in uh, Oris, which is uh, the middle one. So they were mapping to uh, chromosome 4 and um, it happens that only one of them end up being a functional centromere and the other one which is chromosome 8, uh, the centromere uh, from the chromosome 8, uh, it, it maps but then it is not functional. Uh, th that particular region has somehow undergone uh, sequence uh, reduction, uh, sequence reduction in the sense the GC poor uh, part that I had told earlier, that has reduced. So this was one uh, 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 point that led to uh, say that there has been an uh, event of inactivation of one chromosome if you look from Lusitania to um, Oris. And uh, 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 like uh, apart from this, there are events of uh, duplications and uh, yeah, duplications. Uh, so uh, again, coming back to clade two of Candida auris, uh, uh, it is proposed that it might have followed a very unique evolutionary trajectory, given that it has so many uh, uh, absolutely like uh, different uh, rearrangements happening within them. So uh, this is a proposed evolutionary path that uh, Candida auris might have come uh, addressed. So um, uh, that could have been a common ancestor of the Lusitania and one another uh, species which is from the same umbrella. And uh, this Hemilionic complex and, uh, uh, clay, uh, and Candida auris, uh, uh, these might have had a different common ancestor. Like clay two uh, might have just diverged out. Uh, and from these, because there, ha there is also an event of uh, uh, chromosomal terminal uh, translocation, uh, meaning which that there's another event of rearrangement which uh, sets apart this. So, yeah, so that's about it. Um, so this was about, um, this was about the rearrangements that were happening around the Candida or RIS organism. Uh, uh, so this, uh, so re quite recently, as I said, the clades were uh, uh, distinguished on the basis of the geographical places that they were found in. But recent reports have also reported that from the same location, you are getting uh, organisms that uh, uh, that are from 
two different grades. For example, uh, the East Asian clade. Now you have uh, organisms that uh, correspond to clade three as well as clade one. So geographical uh, location based uh, 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 clade typing uh, might not be an efficient way of uh, uh, grouping the uh, new strains which are found. So there are many uh, efforts being taken to classify the stra uh, strains into different clades. Uh, here what we have tried to do is uh, look at uh, uh, some specific genome sequences in uh, the clades that we had known uh, previously like from uh, before the mixing event has happened. And we have tried to look at unique uh, genome sequences that could correspond uh, to only that particular clade. So we try to, um, so um, so this is a schematic of what, uh, of the process. So uh, pairwise alignment of the strains belonging to, okay, yeah. So uh, basically focusing on the misaligned regions or the breakpoints, uh, we were able to get the unique regions and on the basis of that primers were designed and basically we ended up with having a very rapid uh, experimental setup uh, uh, with, uh, with the aid of some bioinformatics tools that could actually classify these strains into different clades. Yes, so um, it was validated and uh, it was working fine and good. Um, yes, so so uh, so summarizing the work, we had uh, uh, so centromeres could uh, could be uh, the focus of uh, research if we were to look at uh, uh, for other strains that are coming up, and uh, uh, clay two is again. Uh, 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 is something that we could fo focus on given that it undergoes a lot of uh, rapid uh, chromosomal rearrangements and uh, yes that's it. Uh, these are the uh, like work uh, these are the papers that correspond to the work that i just presented and uh, yeah thank you